Good evening, Lake Orion. Well, what a day. What an evening. I'm your host, and I am between Terminas. Oh, look, it's Marlo. Hi, Marlo. Hi, baby Marlo. Hi. Yes, indeed. This is Between Terminas here on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Terminas, and I've got Sam here, and I've got our co-host, Ian Weatherspoon here, who is currently on Zoom actually taking care of Baby Marlo. Everything's okay, Baby Marlo. Everything's okay. Marlo doesn't like her first TV screen. What do you mean she doesn't like her first TV screen? Come on. She's having trouble. I know. Okay, so... I think one thing why Marlo's upset too, other than she's getting fed, is about what's going on with the Detroit Lions and what's going on with Ian's sports scenes. You guys like the mullet? It's a good look. Um, so, all right, so let's talk about, so let's talk about something that's dear to our hearts, which is Michigan, Michigan State. We're at Michigan, Michigan State week, so Sammy, go first. I'm telling everybody this right now what the world is saying to you. Michigan State is rolling right now. Yes, they had the bye week. I know Coach Mel Tucker's done a phenomenal job. The he word, could go to LSU. He's not going to LSU. So the word tuck coming is going to be the future for, for Michigan people, and especially for a man known as Bob Bridges who needs psychological care. I mean, he like, does. everything here is pointing to, everything is pointing. You got college game day coming to East Lansing. You got NF, you got Fox, some big noon kickoff coming to East Lansing. I mean, it's going to be a great atmosphere to Michigan, Michigan State. Don't you agree with me, Mr. Weatherspoon? You know, for once I agree with you. And for, for poor Marlo, the Lions don't have a win in her lifetime. I know. But Michigan State doesn't have a loss. So. I know, they don't, and that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Maybe Marlo is the magic of Michigan State right now. What? Marlo's the magic of Michigan State right now. You guys are aware that our governor has said that um, that this is that is rivalry week between Michigan and Michigan State, right? Of course, Whitmer's oh, wearing the right team. colors. She's go she's a Spartan. You know what I mean? Well, but she's got one thing right. Yeah, she does got one thing right. But I'm telling you guys, in the game with Michigan, Michigan State, we talked about this on the podcast. Obviously, um, obviously, the key is going to be. Is can Michigan is can Peyton Thorne throw the football? And you said it best. Michigan's corners are not very are not that strong. They were exposed by Ricky White last year. You know what I mean? So we, when you really look Ricky at Lombardi. I mean Rocky Lombardi, Rocky but Lombardi. Rock, Ricky White was the wide receiver. Yeah. So when you really look at this game, Ian, on paper, Michigan State, you know what I mean? I think Michigan State, they have the blueprint against Michigan's defense, and Michigan still got some issues at cornerback. I mean and then the other side, on the flip side, can Michigan throw the ball? You know what I mean? That's going to be the thing against Michigan State. That's the key when you really look at the game on paper between Michigan State and Michigan. I think it comes down to the quarterback. Yes, it does. Peyton Can Thorne. Can McNamara step up in a way he has not shown he's been able to? Mm -hmm. Peyton Thorne has been really good for Michigan State. I mean, he's been really good. I know you were a little nervous last week against Indiana, uh, but... I think Peyton Thorne's going to be fine in this game. I really do. But I think the key is McNamara's arm. Can can Michigan throw the ball against Michigan State? That's the big key right now. And you really look at it here. I know a lot of Michigan people are really upset and frustrated about Michigan's inability to throw the ball. Um, but they've managed to win games based on running the ball. And, you know, that's been always been Jim Harbaugh's mantra, even when he was at Stanford. I mean, like. You know, it's just run the football and win your games. What about with Michigan, Michigan? Mm -hmm. What about with Michigan, Michigan State being what Harbaugh would consider an elimination game? Is this an elimination game? I think it is. I mean, because when you really look at it here, um, you know, Ohio State right now is still, you know, I mean, they still both teams got to play Ohio State. Um, 
I, I mean, like, I think if you look at Michigan, Mich- if you look at Michigan State, I mean, like, if they can win this game, um, I think they're going to be in a really good. I think Rose Bowl could be in the future for one of these two teams. I really do think the Rose Bowl could be in the future for both teams. What do you what think? About, what about BCS game? <laughs> what about national championship mm-hmm. implications? Yeah. Ian, you think they should be in the BCS ty- BCS implications of the Rose Bowl title? I take the Rose Bowl's first step. But... Mm-hmm. I could see Michigan State going back to Rose Bowl. I really do. I mean, Michigan, I just see them going maybe back to Capital One Bowl. Ooh. So, all right, so who do you got winning? Ian, you first. I'm going to have to give my winner and leave because Marlo is not having this. <laughs> okay, Ian. All right, you take care. My winner, I think Michigan wins. I don't want them to, but I think Michigan wins. I think Michigan State wins by all right, three touchdowns. All right, Ian, you take care. All right, Ian, you take care of yourself, man. Hey, we'll see you in studio with Bob Bridges, all right? Yeah, we will. Bye, Ian. Bye, Marlo. Bye, baby Marlo. Bye, Spoon. All right, so who do you got? I got Michigan State by three touchdowns. You really got Michigan State by three touchdowns? Yes. I think this game's going to be close. Who do you got? I think that by a hair, I'm going to say Michigan State by a hair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Finally rating the boat for a change. Well, but, I mean, I'm being fair. It could easily go Michigan's way, too. Michigan can run the football. The key thing, I think, is going to be Michigan State's offensive line. Mm-hmm. And Michigan State's offensive line is, is probably the test in terms of, But Michigan you know, State's got a good offensive line. Michigan's got a good defensive line, too. So I think it comes down, can McNair throw the ball? That's the thing. That's the question. That's the question. If McNair can throw the ball, you know what I mean, then who knows? We'll All right. see what happens. All right, we'll be right back between Terminas on ON TV. ON TV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10 week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Between Terminas here on ON TV. I'm Anthony Termina. How are you guys doing? Also, I'm also going to Mount Look. So, Sam, how are you doing? Oh, uh, hanging in there. I feel bad, though, that Ian had to leave us, though, unfortunately. Well, I mean, Ian's got father responsibilities, and, you know, and we just, um, you know, Marlo does look cute and wonderful. Yes, she does. That's awesome. Yes, she does. She looks cute and wonderful. Ian, not so much. Of course. His beard, he's, he's got a good he's a that beard. Like, yeah, he's, he's a shaver. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about... Uh, one thing that's dear to your heart, which is the Detroit Lions. How are they dear to my heart when they're a daycare center and I could put Bob Bridges there and still he can beat the Lions? That says a lot. And Would you and Bob wear paper bags together for the Lions? Absolutely we would. I mean, like... Oh, boy. I mean, like, I would like to see how... Um, but this team's got no talent, absolutely no talent. And I know Jared Goff's been terrible. I mean, like... The best player on that team has been DeAndre Swift. I mean, obviously the running back, but he can't do it alone. TJ Hawkinson's been very spotty at best. He's been injured, though, too. He's been injured, too, but the Lions have just been, they've been shredded. You know what I mean? We're talking possibly 0-17 with this group. You really think the Lions will go 0-17? Yes, I do. Because look at the schedule they got this week. They got the Eagles this week. They got Jalen Hurts, um, Nelson Aguilar. I mean, like, I mean, I think the Lions, they're going to get beat by the Eagles this week, and there's going to be a lot of booing over there at Ford Field. And then they go on their bye week. Mm, so and I still think the bye week beats the Lions. You still think the bye week beats the Lions? Yes, I do. So are you impressed with, the, with any with any team in the NFL you've been impressed with? Um, Cincinnati. I mean, clearly. The Hoodays. The Hoodays, yep. The way they've been playing. Joe Burrow's been really good. Jameer Chase has been playing outstanding. Um, Cincinnati... They, what they did to Baltimore last week was really impressive. Um, I didn't think that a Cincinnati would do that, would go in there and just be a Baltimore team that was really riding high. 
Um, and they, they just blew them out. I was shocked. I mean, that's the team that's been the most impressive to me. Another team I've been impressed with is Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. um, Dallas, the way they're playing, they're playing finally playing expectations. Um, and they're right now in command of the NFC East. Um, so that's a team that I'm really, really high on. Um, a team I've been really disappointed with um, has been the, um, I'll be flat honest with you, Chicago. I mean, the Chicago Bears. I thought Matt Nagy would do, make the next step, but his offense has been a complete disaster. Very similar to Matt Patricia here in Detroit with the um, what he did with the Lions. A lot of people look at Nagy, thought about his offense, you know, would be magic and all that, but it really unfortunately hasn't happened. Justin Fields has been really inconsistent. Um, so that's a team I've been really disappointed with, you know, and you can't rely on that defense to win your games. I mean, like, Chicago's been that team that I've been really, really disappointed with. What about the Rams? <clears throat> uh, the Rams, are ex I expected. You know, I mean, Stafford's having a great year. Mm -hmm. Cooper Cup, obviously, has been really outstanding. Um, you look at the Lions, this team really – I mean, look at the Rams. I mean, like, I think they got the pieces. They're not, Henderson's done an outstanding job at running back. Um, their line's solid. Their defense is okay. I mean, like – but I just think with the Rams, I expected where they were at. I mean, a lot of people look at Arizona – at 7-0, and obviously, I mean, like, and then, um, so the Cardinals have been playing outstanding football. Those two teams, I think, are going to be going in the West mm -hmm. all season long in that division. Okay, so pretty, so pretty much the NFL is looking at, you're pretty much looking at the NFL being consistent right now. They're consistent. There's a lot of mediocre teams, though. I mean, right. like, you look at, obviously, you know, the, the whole league has been, mediocre at best and it's mm -hmm. really unfortunate you know what i mean that but it also opens up the door for good competition and unfortunately for lions fans the lions haven't joined in on that competition because of their struggles i mean so when you really look at the the league right now you got your top teams you got your mediocre teams i mean then you got your terrible teams. so you know so when you look at the lions obviously um there's some i mean when you look at the nfl obviously you know what i mean it's a lot of parody but also a lot of mediocrity. All right, so let's talk about the NHL. The NHL <laughs> has just gotten back going. Um, obviously, any team that surprises you? Um, you know, not really. The Canadian start has been really disappointing. Um, especially Oilers but, are playing well. But I understand the Stanley Cup, um, being in the Stanley Cup Finals is mm -hmm. really difficult to get. Right. You know, you're, it's really... a it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I mean, Dallas just getting right back. that last year. My Dallas Stars experienced that last year. Unfortunately, not making the playoffs. Um, little surprised that both our teams are struggling a little bit. The Stars and the Abs. Yeah. I mean, like Colorado, I can understand their injuries and all that, but Dallas's issues are just scoring. I mean, that's the issue I have with them. Then Detroit's off to the way. wings are. The wings have been. Man, I mean, they've they've had some good games. They've had some bad games. They're your Jekyll and Hyde team. They're I your mean, Jekyll and Hyde right now. I mean, you look at obviously. They're better but, than they were last year. They're better than they were last year. Can't Bertuzzi's, deny that. Bertuzzi's been playing really well for mm -hmm. them. Um, Lucas Raymond's been playing well for them, obviously. Um, but everything starts and goes with Dylan Larkin for Detroit, and I think that's the key for them is Dylan Larkin. I mean, obviously, when you look at Colorado, obviously McKinnon is the key. Landy's the key. Um you know, hasn't struggled a lot. And that, I mean, we can't forget we've not been healthy. And then so, the no, stars, in the stars' case, it's the inability to score. I mean, you know, especially when you have Ben Sagan, Rajaloff, I mean, right. like, and Pavalski, and they can't score. That's a problem. You know what I mean? So that's something that all three of our teams have to address. Right. You know what Any I mean? Any other team that's impressed you? Um, you said it, the Oilers, you uh, know what yeah. I mean? They were surprised. Um, Columbus off to a good start. They were, they were a head-scratching team to start the year. I mean, like, they... Sell out, sell, sell out, off a lot of pieces, but the team I'm mostly surprised with the Chicago. I mean, mm -hmm. the Blackhawks, you know, all that talent they got, the Seth Jones acquisition and Seth Jones trade, um, that acquisition really hasn't really fit well with Chicago. I mean, like, that's a team I'm really surprised with with them right now. Oh, uh, I mean, and also not to mention the allegations came the investigation, out. The investigation yes, came out. Their general manager stepped down. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, and that's really unfortunate you know for them yeah. but you know we live in this new world so you know what i mean so it is what it is well uh the nba um what's your take about the nba starting back up um you know what the, the lakers are playing well the um bucks are the bucks 
Pistons are Pistons and Timberwolves are the only two teams in the league that don't have wins yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think the Pistons don't without Cunningham. You know they don't have him right now, and I think that's a big problem. Um, but for them, it's just they've got to figure things out. They got to figure some things out. Um, to me, that is a they might need another player. You know what I mean? But the fact that they're winless right now is. Really not surprising right now, unfortunately. World Series, Braves versus Astros. Atlanta wins in six. You think Atlanta wins the World Series in six? Mm-hmm. The Braves wins. are off to a good start. They won last night. That they are. That they so. are. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll be right back with Between Tiraminas on ON TV. <laughs> Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Between Terminas here on ONTV, where right now it's just both myself and Sam. Ian is being the father, t- taking care of father life right now. It is, you know what I mean? Good for Ian. Good for him, you know? Mm-hmm. Good for him. Yeah. You know? So let's talk about something that is dear to our hearts, and that is the um, Oakland Activities Association. Um, obviously, the podcast devoted to it. Right, you have the podcast devoted to it. Um, let's talk about the. Um, the OAA in particular, the, um, the your, your viewpoint about what do you, do you think the OAA should go into a situation where, um, or do you think the MHSA in general should go into, should everyone make the playoffs or should there be a, um, or should there, should we keep the status quo? Also, how does that impact the OAA in terms of realignment? You know, I get this question every week. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously when you look at, um, when you look at me and Ian, when we talk on the podcast, um, mm-hmm. should the MHA keep the status quo or go to the eight-team format, which really worked out really well mm-hmm. um, with everybody making the playoffs? I mean, that's a good question. Um, I think when you look at the bracket, how it's done, I know Stony Creek got left out along with Troy Athens. Mm-hmm. Rochester um, was also another team that got left out um, from the occasion in the OA. Um, I think if you look, if you have everybody make the playoffs, you don't have this arguing or bickering. You really just you really don't have this arguing, debate, tenseness. I mean, like you know, we're having to rely on playoff points to basically carry you. You know what I mean? I mean, relying on other teams. I mean, like so. Do you think the scheduling? Because the scheduling, obviously, in particular for football, um, when you look at scheduling, you look at a team that. You look at teams that often are you, you got teams that are grouped up in the highest division and they're beating each other up week in, week out, and then you got other teams that are, are coasting by their coasting by their divisions. Do you think the scheduling do you think that, that the MHSA should take a different different consideration when it comes to scheduling? I think they do have to and I think that's the thing. Um, obviously, um, when you look at the scheduling this year, I mean, like, you look at the teams that play tougher schedules. Um, I know the MHA looked at rewarding teams that play difficult schedules. Um, I'm looking at the schedule right now, and I'm looking at teams like Lake Orion and South Anderson Tech who played murderous row schedules. And then I know Oxford was benefited from playing a murderous row of a schedule, you know. But when you look at teams like Avondale, you know what I mean, who are in Division Three. Um, who snuck in because of the schedule. I think when you look at playing it based on a tough schedule, strength of schedule, I just think that, um, you know, if you get everybody in there, it totally shuts everybody, it shuts, it shuts the debate up, you know what I mean? I mean, like, playing an eight-game schedule really would, um, would change a lot of benefits, you know what I mean? What about a situation like a team like a Davison who, who played, uh, who, in the Saginaw Valley, they have... Um, where there's a lot of Division Two and Division Three schools, and then you really have only three Division One schools in there. Um, Davison, for example, beat up a lot of those Division Two and Division Three schools, but then when they played Grand Blank and Lapeer, the two D1 schools, they lost those games along with along with Clarkson and Catholic Central, and 
now Davidson's not making the playoffs. Should, and you could make the same argument for Lapierre, even though Lapierre is in the playoffs, still Lapierre's beating up the same teams, but then they lost to um, Grand Blank, but they beat Davidson. Um, do you think that they should, you should be rewarded by playing more Division I teams rather than playing more, you know, if you're a Division I school, if, should you be rewarded by playing more Division I teams? You're a Division I school and you should be playing Division I schools. I mean, obviously, that's my point of reference here. Obviously, when you look at teams that I know that made the, I mean, like in Davison's case, the fact they lost those 41 schools, um, it wasn't enough to get them in the playoffs. Um, but then you look at Lapeer, obviously, you know, I mean, I mean, they had a, that really tough loss to a, to Grand Rapids Catholic Central, yeah, to Grand who, Rapids Catholic Central. who is this top team in Division Five. Mm -hmm. And then you look at um, a team like, you know, you look at this year's Blue Division, you know, you look at Blue Hills, Troy, you know, I mean, both those teams are in the playoffs despite playing a really not a, not as strong of a schedule as you could say, a teams in the white or the teams in the red. I mean, there's only one team in the white. That's in the playoffs. Right. Um, but when you really look at the strength of schedule component, I mean, if you want to get more teams in the OAA, I mean, like in the playoffs, I think you need to do is play Division One teams. I also think you need to, um, you know, balance the divisions out. That's just my opinion. But when you really look at the schedule, when you really look at Davison's case, you know, if Davison wins at least one or two of those, one of those, you know what I mean, during the playoffs, you know, we're not even having this discussion. But, you know, when you look at the strength of schedule component, you know, you got to reward those who played a tough schedule and those who not. I mean, like, obviously, you know, a team like Stony Creek who got robbed, you know what I mean, basically, of not, of, they were the 33rd team in the playoffs yep. in Division One. I. I mean, like, to me, that's a head scratcher, you know, and I know that, didn't make Ian happy when I talked to him on the pod mm -hmm. on, on um, this week, and there's a lot of things that got to be addressed. So obviously, you you would be in favor of everyone making the playoffs. I think now because you know we're in a new time now. Um, you look at the success rate of the um, of what 2020 brought last year with with the playoff system. Mm -hmm. It was really successful. and But you could also make the argument there was a lot more blowouts, too. There were a lot more blowouts, but at least everybody got a chance to make the playoffs, experience what postseason life was. Um, obviously, um, that's something you got to look at as well. Um, one thing that we talk about with the Oakland Activities Association in particular is you've noticed the last few years the OA has been expanding a little more. They've included recently... Ferndale University and recently included Harper Woods. Um, what's your thoughts about the about and could we see more expansion down the line? I do. I mean, then I think there's a team up on M24 that I could really see coming. I mean, like I really think that you know. Um, Obviously, we can't. You know. I mean, like I, that's my opinion. I'm not right. going by you know what they're going to do, what, what they're, they're going to do, do, what but, they're not going to do. Yes, but when I really look at expansion obviously you know you got to find out where you know where are you going to get the schools where are you going to mm -hmm. where are you going to you know find where the, where the foundation is where is it going to be where are you going to go are you going to go west you're going to go north you're going to go east you're going to go south you know what i mean it's pretty much when you look at the description of the oaa you know what i mean if they can at least find it some teams that fit the leagues i think it'll make good sense I mean, like, would you argue that um, Harper Woods, would Harper Woods have, would they have fit the league? I mean, they're one of the smaller schools in the OAA. You know, if, if you're like. But they're also 20 minutes from Berkeley and Royal Oak and Ferndale. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you look at geographic from Berkeley to Ferndale to Royal Oak, I mean, like, you know, it makes sense for them, you know, but if you're like a northern school, you're up at arms, you know, you got to likely make an hour bus trip down mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, I mean, from 75, 696, um, really difficult for the northern, so northern schools, whereas it's a little bit easier for the southern schools, obviously. So this, to me, Harper Woods, I'm curious to see what they do this winter and this spring. Mm -hmm. So it'll give me a clear answer on, um, on Harper Woods. Just give me until spring to decide that. The Traverse City Schools are going to the Saginaw Valley for football, um, for football only. Um, 
What's your take on schools going to other conferences for football only, but staying in their original conference for other sports? And then also Flint Powers as well, going independent, but also staying in the Valley, in the Saginaw Valley for basketball and other sports. It's really interesting because when you really look at, um, you know, with basketball, there's not a lot of, the numbers are down, obviously, you know what I mean? You know, you don't have like 60, 70 kids, you know what I mean? You right. Football. Whereas in basketball, you have about like between 12 and 15 players. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when so you, it's a lot easier. It's a lot of, easier. You know what I mean? It's a lot understandable in travel. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to um, really see how um, now with Traverse City, Traverse City Central, Traverse City West coming down to play the Valley. You know, I'm curious to see who's traveling up there because it's like a because if you're like Grand Blank, you're going like from four hours four or five hours, you know, from like Grand Blank. Grand Blank or Davidson or, or Lapeer. Lapeer. You know, you're going five hours, you know what I mean? I know it's all freeway and all that, but, mm -hmm. but still, it's, it's, quite a it's hike. still quite a hike, you know. So it's going to be really interesting to see how those two teams feel. Those three fit. teams. Oh, it's the Traverse City Seals. In the Saginaw Valley. And then, of course, with Powers leaving, you know, for football only, I think it's really interesting. Um, but I'm curious to see how they're, how they're going to do independent, you know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. not... Sure, like let's say if the Catholic League would look into Flint Powers, I mean maybe it's a possibility. So we'll see what happens. I mean it's definitely a possibility to look at in terms of you know where all these, you know whether what the expansion front will go going forward or what the, um, you know or the situations going on in the Saginaw Valley with the Traverse City Schools and Flint Powers, um, also the, also the, the also you've got you know. The future, the future is bright, especially for you know with um, with football and also the concept of whether every team makes the playoffs or whether we stay in the status quo. Because I mean, you you look at both sides. Both sides are you know, you know, it'll be interesting to see. So, do you think that the the decision could impact how the Oakland Activities Association realigns their teams, especially in football? I do, because, you know, you don't know if you're going to go nine games or eight games. I mean, like, you know, if you have to go, like, to a, um, if you have to go to a three-division or a four-division format, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think you can't you, go wrong with either can't one. Can't go wrong with either or. I mean, like, if you go to a nine-game or an eight-game schedule, I mean, like, you know, if they go to an eight game, it makes a lot of sense. But if they go to a nine game, so be it. You know what I mean? But it, as long as it gives teams an opportunity, a chance to play, and especially the postseason, that's something you got to keep a very close eye on. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it's just it's just going to be an it's just going to be interesting going forward. So any final thoughts? We'll see what happens. Um, just getting ready to watch Michigan, Michigan State this weekend. You know what I mean? Really That'll exciting. be fun. Yes. I hope I can brag to Bob Bridges about this and we can talk um, beautiful Spartan football. We'll have to bring Bob Bridges back on. God, I hope not. I, I, it would be fun. You know, so it let's do a bad. call out real quick. Who are you calling out this week? I don't really have anybody calling out. You don't have a call out this week? No. You know what? We're not going to do call outs this week, so we'll do that next week. Yes. Okay. All right. Have a great night. Or ONTV, have a great night and see you soon on Between 10 Minutes here on ONTV. Take care. Bye. Oh, <laughs>